Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Massachusetts, the most liberal state of all. Now we're not going to get into politics too much here, but there's some interesting dichotomies here. Massachusetts does an excellent job on education, and it's one of the safest states you can live in. Some rankings, not mine, have called Massachusetts one of the top five states you can live in. So whatever liberalism exists here, things could be worse. I mean, look at California. However, there are some big problems here too. If you were to ask somebody from Massachusetts where the worst places to live are, some would say Lawrence, you'll hear Holyoke or Brockton or North Adams, and of course, there's Springfield. For this video, we're going to drive through the worst parts of Springfield so you can see what is essentially the worst area to live in this whole state. We're going to talk about why this place is so bad and talk with somebody who lives here to get some additional perspective. As we'll see, Springfield has improved, but it's still in a bad place right now, and there's no optimism things are going to get better. Springfield, Springfield, it's a hell of a town. The schoolyard's up and the shopping mall's down. What? Every state has a bruise. Even the best places to live have bad sides to them. In the case of Massachusetts, it's here. Springfield has a population of 155,000 people, but that number has gone down by 17% from its high in the 1960s. People are leaving here for various reasons. The poverty, the crime, for better opportunities. And words out about how badly this place is doing. At a time when home prices are astronomically high, Springfield's one of 13 cities where home prices are going down. That's not a good sign. Back in the day, this place was jamming. They still call Springfield the city of firsts. They made the first dictionary, the first gas-powered car, and basketball was invented here. This place was home to many large manufacturers and inventors. They made bread, cars, motorcycles, guns, Brass goods, chemicals, watches, toys, engines, books. A lot of stuff was created and distributed here. There were once big downtown department stores and movie theaters. There were crowds of well-dressed shoppers on Main Street. It once had peaceful neighborhoods and well-respected public schools. But like many of our formerly great cities, things went downhill in the last half of the 20th century. A bunch of factories closed down. Springfield made a series of poor planning decisions, and industries just left the whole northeastern part of the U.S. We've seen similar declines in other cities out this way, places like Rochester, Buffalo, and Hartford. By the mid-1980s, Springfield was known nationally as a place with high crime, political corruption, and poverty. Today, a lot of the factories and manufacturing centers are decaying and have four lease signs up. Companies just don't need to base their operations in these large urban centers. They don't even need to be in America anymore. This place almost filed for bankruptcy, though it seems to have recovered from near disaster. The biggest claim to fame for Springfield's attempt at a turnaround came with the opening of the MGM Casino downtown. But as you probably know, casinos usually bring in additional revenue, but they also bring in their share of crime and blight. Most folks who live here cannot or should not blow their money at a casino. No way, pal. Today, nearly one in three residents here lives in poverty. This is the second poorest city in the whole state. The average person here earns about $18,000 a year. And keep in mind, Massachusetts is the fourth most expensive state to live in. People just can't keep up. Springfield certainly isn't unique. Lots of our former great cities declined over time. And those with greater aspirations have moved into shinier, newer communities. A lot of people took their families into areas nearby, places like West Springfield, Agawam, Ludlow, and Longmeadow. The biggest problem with Springfield appears to be the type of people who have remained. It's well known that Massachusetts is a welfare state, and words out to people who want to take advantage of generous welfare benefits. They've heard, Springfield's door is wide open for free aid. Come here, don't work and you can skate by. And they come, and they do. Siri, how much does Massachusetts spend on welfare? I guess she's not around. I'll answer that. Massachusetts spends the third most per capita on its welfare system. The average resident here gets $2,911 every year in welfare expenditures. Wow, Mappy, that's pretty eye-opening. Would you ever collect welfare benefits? Not long term. 
Welfare is supposed to be short-term, not generational. Studies have shown that welfare dependency hurts communities. It holds people back. Government is not supposed to prop up people's lives. So Springfield's stuck in a rut, and it can't really grow either. Much of New England has no unincorporated land, so it's not like Springfield can absorb nicer nearby communities to springboard growth. Crime is terrible here. We haven't talked about that yet. Violent crime is three times higher than national average, and some of the worst offenders in Massachusetts live right here in Springfield. There's lots of drugs and gangs and lots of kids roaming the streets without guidance. There's garbage all over the place, and a lot of homes are literally falling down. They're either left to rot or they're improved, only to see them get burglarized or trashed by bozo renters. Although, things have improved here. I mean, crime has peaked somewhat, though not in the neighborhoods like the one we're in right now. Graduation rates are going up a little bit, and they opened a new train manufacturing plant, so that gives folks some hope. But still, this place has a long way to go just to get back to being average again. What we're seeing is another major U.S. city struggling to keep its head above water, while a lot of people who live here are pulling it down intentionally. It's un-American. Or has this way of thinking now become American? If so, that is scary. Okay, everybody. Right now we have a special guest. His name is Nick, and he lives in Springfield. Hey, Nick. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for writing me. You know, you, you, you've been in Springfield for a while now, and you explained to me some of the challenges that Springfield has. And, you know, I was there for an afternoon and kind of drove around. Actually, I spent the night there um, and drove around to some of the areas that are the most troubled parts of Springfield. Um, you know, it's pretty rough. I've seen worse, but man, there are big pockets of Springfield that are, that are in, in a bad, in a bad way. Um, why, um, why is Springfield struggling right now? Do you have any idea? You know, I try to think about that myself because there's a lot that it has going for it as far as where it's located and everything like that. But it just seems like they need, um, I think they, they need something to incentivize people to move here. Because, like, as you notice, there's not really a lot of abandoned buildings and things like that. People are living here, but it's just a lot of, like, people without money. If they, they, For example, they got the um, Smith & Wesson. They're actually their biggest corporation. They're leaving. So they, they need something, like, I would say, like, tax breaks or something to bring people in, like, you know, how Nashville and things like that are doing. Mm -hmm. And so so since everybody's been leaving and they, they got only four people coming here, it's just it's just getting worse and worse. Yeah, so the people that are motivated that have good jobs are leaving because there's not good jobs. And the people moving in are the people that are on welfare, out of work, kind of. Exactly. They incentivize you to be on welfare up here. I've noticed this in Massachusetts is a lot different than Florida. Like if you get like food, you can come here and get food stamps within 24 hours. They'll have it in your account. Yeah, so also people that are on assistance like this, they will tell you if you get a job and you're working and you're getting too many like, you start to increase your hours, they're going to tell you literally that you should lower your hours so that way you can keep getting your benefits because you, if you increase your hours, you're going to lose them. Yeah, you can't run a community like that where you're incentivizing people to not work and handing out money to people who aren't working when the hardworking folks are struggling themselves. That, that's just not cool. Is it just – so you came from Florida. I heard there's billboards in Florida. This may not be true that say move to Springfield, you get good benefits. Is that true or is that just a rumor? I've never, no, I haven't seen any. I haven't heard anything about Springfield in Florida. Nobody I know has ever heard of it. I only moved here because I have family here and I just wanted to try something new. But, um, but I, you know, I've, my grandma has told me that in the airport in Puerto Rico, they had a billboard saying to move up to Massachusetts for things like that. So I have heard it, but I've never seen it myself. I mean, so Massachusetts is a very liberal state um, mm -hmm. and, a, and a welfare state. And Springfield is probably the, the poorest, if not the poorest, one of the poorest places in the state. So you can imagine the, the type of people that are going to move to Massachusetts are going to gather in a place like Springfield where they got a lot of people that are similarly poor and on welfare like them. And, you know, friends mm -hmm. tend to bring more friends and relatives up. It's like that in Illinois, too. There's some small towns. Um, words out in Chicago and has been for a decade or more where 
And they basically tell people, come down here, like leave Chicago. It's expensive. Come down here and get welfare and, and, and live off the system. And, and words out, man. I mean, that people just know and they flock to areas like that. Yeah, exactly. It would probably be a lot like that because, as you know, Boston is one of the most expensive places in the country. So if you're coming from somewhere else, you most likely can't afford to live in Boston. And they only have so much housing out there, too. So Springfield has a lot of room and it's more a lot, a lot more affordable. Everything's a lot cheaper out here than it is over there. Yeah, drugs and crime. So how bad is the crime there? I hear per capita top 10 in the country for cities of its size. What kind of stuff do you hear about crime-wise there in Springfield? Well, they have – so, for example, there was a liquor store near my house. That was robbed with these people on dirt bikes. They they hit that up, and then they they took off. Like, literally, cops will have their own dirt bikes so so they can get people off-road like that. Um, Other than that, you know, it's a lot better than it was. And back in the 90s, it was way worse. But now, mostly, it's like, you know, like, small things like breaking into cars and things like that. You know, there's a lot of like drug, there's a lot of shootings. If you look in the news, you'll see a lot of shootings because mostly over drug deals, I would assume things like that are either gang related or drug related. It's not really targeting like innocent civilians. I feel pretty safe walking around most of the time, but, but yeah, I would say, I would say it's, that's what I'm saying that it's not that great because most of the city has these problems. It's not just concentrated to one area. So the police have dirt bikes so they can chase. Yeah, they have their own. So they can chase the criminals off into the uh, boonies to, to catch them? Because they have like little bike trails and things like that. And, and people use the bike trails for motorized bikes and dirt bikes and things like that. There's a, there's a problem where like a lot of the kids, they take over the streets. Like when they're young, they ride these bicycles and they do wheelies all in traffic and everything like that all times of the day. But then when they grow up, they're doing the same thing with dirt bikes, four wheelers, things. There'll be whole squads of kids running around doing that. You know, their parents just, they don't care. They let them. So actually last year, the cops started cracking down on it and they started like going up to people's houses, confiscating all these things that they see them on the street. They'll, they'll pull them over and confiscate it. But before they weren't doing that, they were just letting them get away with it, just letting them go home. Yeah, yeah. Six o'clock at night, you'll see a bunch of kids riding the streets with the bikes, people smoking weed all over the street and everything. It's just doing little house parties and things like that outside. It's, it's time. I, I don't generally go around there at that time myself because I'm... Um, and kind of just drove around. It was it was generally pretty crummy, you know. It, it the whole area, right? It's yeah. Everywhere you go, it's just like that. It's not really, there's not really many good parts of Springfield around. It's just all like that. Is that casino been a bad thing for that community because i went there and i most of the people that were kind of hanging around didn't look to be low lives like what i see at normal casinos inside the casino you mean Mm -hmm. well no maybe not so much inside like you know it had people from around new england they do go to this casino me personally i don't like it i think mohegan is a better casino foxwoods but people do come here so there is that but just if you walk outside around at nighttime it's just all sketchy people. Everybody's going to look at you and just stare you down. Like they're trying to start problems. Like it's like, if you go there, it's just good to go in the casino, go to the parking garage and leave. There's really not no reason to walk around the outer, the, the neighborhood outside of that. It's probably one reason Springfield has a bad rap because a lot of people probably go down to the casino from all over the state and then they kind of linger around there and they're like, Oh God, this is shady. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let me get back in my car. Yeah, it's not the best downtown area. I mean, it's not the best place. It's not the worst place, but it's very easy to, you know, word to spread among the state that um, it's a terrible place when most people just see pretty much the area around the casino and then see some low lives and bums and, and you know, hood rats kind of lingering <laughs> and acting like fools. It, it, Springfield's one of uh, only a dozen or so larger cities in the country that has a declining uh, popula- uh house price. Um, most places mm-hmm. in the country, h- home prices are going through the roof and um, it's making it unaffordable for, m- for most people. Um, but Springfield's home prices are going down. Mm-hmm. That is true. You can find houses for in the hundred thousand dollar range, you know, and that's almost unheard of these days. Yeah. I, I mean, if a, if a home price is going down in a small rural area with, you know, 600, 700 people, that's one thing, but Springfield's a, almost a major city and, and to see mm-hmm. home prices go down, that's pretty telling of what's going on there. Um, and it's in new England. 
It's New You can't find anything in New England. It's expensive out here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame, man. Would you say Springfield's a depressing place? Would that be a, a harsh word to use, or is that accurate? It, I would say so. I would say it is. I mean, th- there's a lot of good things about Springfield. Like, like if, I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of the architecture, and it, it's it's a beautiful place as far as like the, all the old buildings and everything that that it used to be. And like, and you're like you're the nature and the fall and everything. It's it's a great place, except for the depressing is the people. You know, it's just it's just nobody wants to do anything. Everybody hates their city. No, there's no pride here. So I come here and I say, you know, I love Springfield, but. Like I said, everybody else you talk to, they, they're not going to really like it. They don't like the area. They want to get out. That's why I always tell to my girlfriend, all the everybody who makes some money, they want to move to Florida. They want to get out. So I see why, but that's why it's a shame. That's what I say. It's depressing. Mm-hmm. But you say they're, they're all thinking about moving to Florida. Is that what you say? Everybody wants to move to Florida. I'm the only one that come here. Let, let me tell you, Florida is, is uh, not all that. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on down there for entertainment, but Man, it is crowded and expensive down there, and it's mm-hmm. turning into a, a crazy land. Um, so for people to say that they want to flee to Florida, uh, that Florida doesn't have much longer before it's going to be, you know, just chaos. California light. What are they trying to do to fix Springfield? Uh, I, I mean, you mentioned they need to bring in new jobs. Are, are there people talking about, uh, can you even fix this place? I mean, you can be more um, strict on crime and you can take Mm -hmm. away people's welfare benefits. Um, Mm -hmm. But I don't think, I think that might backfire. Right. So like they are increasing police presence and everything like that. So that's why I say crime is not as bad. They got spot, the spot shooters and things like that to get to, if they hear shootings, they go send cops over there and, you know, they have things like that. So it's not as bad It's getting better. But as far as the, the welfare benefits, that's not going away, you know, this very liberal, liberal beliefs over here. I mean, they got a Republican governor, but I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah, the things aren't going to change. It's just going to be a mm-hmm. poor, poor, dangerous place and no opportunities. And and they're just going to have to live with, with the mess they created. And that's sad <laughs> because Springfield used to be a really neat place. And mm-hmm. I mean, we're going back, you know, 50 years. But um, sadly, it's, you know, one of the worst places in, in that whole region and and probably the the worst place to live in Massachusetts right now, and that's just that's terrible. I would say, I mean, if you're anywhere else like in Massachusetts, that's bad. At least you're close to Boston. You could do things like that. But here, you're kind of far from everything. It's yeah, it's a mess. Definitely. Well, you know, I, I uh, hopefully are you are you planning on leaving? Or do you know a lot of other people that are planning on leaving Springfield? I'm thinking I'm thinking of leaving. I'm, I'm just I work at Hartford, so I'm saving up some money. But I'm thinking. I might move to Connecticut or I might even leave the whole New England because it's just like, as you say, it's expensive. Taxes are high here. Coming from Florida, I do not like the taxes. And that, and that's what I'm thinking they could use to fix like Massachusetts. If they just did, they lower the taxes like they have in Florida. That's why people move there. It's, it's cheaper. If they do something like that, then that could incentivize companies to move here, like lower business taxes, things like that. But unfortunately, they're not doing that. So, No. Well, uh, thanks for your insight. I appreciate that. I'm sure everybody else, uh, you know, it, it's always good hearing from locals and, and the perspective from people who live there. So it's it's one thing for me to look at the data and drive around and say this place is a dump and then to hear hear it from people who live there, um, it just adds perspective. So, Well, I hope, hopefully somebody like that's like in the commissioner or something, somebody that works in the city reads it or listen to it and they maybe want to change their mind. But we could only hope, right? Can only hope that's all we have. Exactly. Right yes. For Massachusetts. Mm. Like I said, there's potential here. There's potential. And the, the rent thing is actually part of the good, one of the good things about it because I pay $800 a month. How, where else in the country can you go and make $15 minimum wage and find rent for $800, $900 a month? I don't think that's possible. Yeah. We're good. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, 
and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey everyone, so it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't gonna help you. If you don't like what you saw in this video, demanding change won't work. You're gonna have to do it on your own. If you wanna be safe and want your community to be a place where people wanna live, you're gonna have to clean the place up yourselves. You're gonna have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.